we're moving along at the same uh, with the same scenario week to week to week. So I'm assuming that this will be exactly the same. Uh, team coming in here that has some very talented athletes uh, causes you a lot of issues. They average almost 30 points a game and gain over 400 or right at 400 yards a game. And supposedly we're the favorite, but that doesn't mean anything. It's going to be a close game, and we'll see if we can win it at the end. Talk about these close games, not being what it's showing in terms of character, your guys that hang in there winning. Well, I, I think that uh, they're close games because we're very inconsistent. And what they do do is play hard, and they play hard till the very end. And we've been fairly lucky here that uh, we make a play or two to win the game. Well, I think I don't think we uh, are uncomfortable late in the game when it's close. And if a team is good enough that they're not in that situation very often. Uh, sometimes they don't react right. I don't think our I think our guys would feel weird if it wasn't like that at the end of the game. I was gonna I, I, I warned Mike and Jamie that I was gonna ask about John Barron the second being on the Lou Groza Award select my list and of course player of the week for the fifth time this year. But I think he seems to excel more I think everybody's excelled in close games, but John's special. So what would you like to say about John getting the being on the select pilot? Well, it doesn't surprise me a bit and, and he deserves to be on that list. Uh I don't know who exactly he's competing against, but you're exactly right. Uh when things are easy he's liable to miss one, but when things are critical he doesn't miss. Uh, but he makes most of them anyway. I mean, he makes most of them, but I think he's got the ability to concentrate in stressful situations where he actually performs. And really good players do that. So he actually performs better under those situations than he does when it's not stressful or there's not pressure. Is the best kicker your cat? Well, I have a hard time. Uh, there's another real good kicker I have in. And he uh, he actually works for the Mountain West Conference. So if I say that, I'm going to get a phone call here in a little while. So uh, I'll say he's as good as any kicker I've ever had, and I've ha I've been lucky. I've had two great kickers in my head coaching career, and they were exactly the same. And I would expect John Barron has a chance to make All American. He made All American. And whenever we needed a kick to win the game, he always made it. And guess what? John Barron always makes it, too. No, he did not. He actually got hurt his senior year. Somebody ran into him. You know, kickers are fragile sometimes. <laughs> I think Barron, uh, I think John Barron, they don't draft many kickers. Uh, I think he has a chance to be drafted late, but he would be better off not being drafted because as a free agent, he's going to have four or five teams. I watch the NFL kickers now. He's going to have four or five teams fighting over him if he's a free agent. No, don't ask me. <laughs> Everything I know about kickers, John tells me. <laughs> well, I, we have we have a couple coaches that uh, know the mechanics of kicking a lot better than I do. So they they discuss it with him. If he's having trouble, they discuss what they might see. It's the same with deep snappers. Deep snappers sometimes are really, really good, and then they go kind of in a slump, and someone that knows how to deep snap has to help them. Uh, no, I think that makes the game more exciting. I mean, I, you know, when a kicker misses or gets one blocked, it makes a huge difference in a game, just like it did last week. Is 
I think the mental toughness is probably exactly the same. The physical toughness is obviously different because kickers don't usually get hit. Uh, but I think the constant, being able to concentrate and be mentally tough under whatever search, circumstance there is out there and you still perform well, I think that's all the same. Oh, I, I think they play for the fun of the game, and any time you play for just the fun of the game, you have a, a much better chance to perform well. I, I think that, uh, and I think this is a part of the reason uh, coaches sometimes affect their team the wrong way. I, I think whenever you're in a winning program like we are, and whenever you win games at a pretty good clip, uh, all of a sudden, some of the fun of playing uh, leaves because of the outside influences and the coaching influences that start making the game a lot more important than it really is. And player, players hear that, and they see that, and I think at times it takes some of the fun out of playing. And that, that's really sad. But, you know, you get to a point in in every season where uh, you're able to play just for the fun of the game, and players usually perform much better that way than they do the other way. Uh, I mean, we try to do some things, but uh, they're they're influenced by a lot more than just what coaches say. In fact, most of the time they don't they don't believe what you're telling them anyway. Uh, but you know. There's outside influences, and now with social media, I mean, uh, we we have players that get nasty comments on their on their phones and everything, before, after, during the week. I mean, so it's impossible to prevent them from hearing all those kind of things or seeing all those kind of things, or you know, I mean, just like I have no idea what the line is, but some, some of our players do. Because I don't think it makes a darn bit of difference, but some of our players will come in and say, hey, coach, did you know we were a 10-point favorite? Who in the hell cares? <laughs> I guess gamblers do, right? <laughs> I guess there are people that care. I mean, I don't care, but uh, they know all those sort of things. Can that be a distraction? Do what? Can that be a distraction? I don't. I think it's a distraction, but it's a distraction equally for all teams. Every everybody's uh, bombarded with the same kind of stuff on social media. If they're an athlete at this level, if they're an athlete at this level, they get bombarded. Rocky, I got a question for the conference. What do you feel for Boise's build for Jefferson Bill to Fresno? You guys are really up the upper echelon. The rest of the league seems to just have an enormous problem. I think every conference has the exact same issues. You go to every single conference and they have uh, programs that are consistent winners. And then they have programs that will win every once in a while. And they have programs that have, for the longest time, have not won. It doesn't matter what conference you're in. Um, you know, some programs never lose a game or don't seem like they ever lose a game. And there's other teams in that same league that have struggled to win a game. And they're the same teams. It seems like they're the same teams every year. Historically, Kentucky's been more of a basketball school, but the fact that Kentucky's uh, top a ranked team throughout the year, you attribute that to the SEC revenue sharing from the national championship games. You attribute that to the revenue Kentucky gets from its basketball program. What do you think has made Kentucky's football team well, I, I think all those teams in that league have generous resources. Uh, but I think, I think uh, people do make a difference. I think uh, 
and it's not just coaches. I think their coach is doing a great job, and obviously his, their, his staff is doing a good job of coaching and recruiting. Uh, but I don't think this will shock anybody in this room. It's from the very top down. For anybody to has a, have a successful successful Division I program in athletics, you have to have support on campus all the way from the president on down. You have to have a good athletic department and athletic director and people that work in the athletic department that give you an opportunity to be successful. And some of that has to do with resources that uh, you can hire good people. And some of it has to do that you get the right group of people together at the same time and things work out. Uh, any break in that chain, I mean, from the very top at a university, from the president of the university all the way down to the graduate assistant coach, any break in that chain and the success that you're having can be eliminated quickly. Uh, we were pleasantly surprised that he performed so well. I think uh, he'll even tell you that he was a little nervous at the beginning. Uh, but when the first pass you throw is right on the money and goes for a pretty good gain, that uh, gets you over that, <laughs> that feeling pretty darn quick. I thought he played really, really well. It's good to have all those guys back. I think they make a difference, and I think they'll make a difference for the rest of the year. Which line is that what you were expecting? Did you run back and this much time? Well, I don't think he was. I don't think he was timid, but I think he was rusty, because uh, if you noticed, he uh, and he told me this that his mind was working faster than his feet, because there was a couple of spots in there that he slipped and fell down because he cut off the wrong foot. Uh, that's obviously rust, because he was he hit a couple of them and. He scored touchdowns in situations that we haven't been scoring touchdowns since he's been out of there. So he, I, I think he'll be much, much better this week. You also, uh, you know, you pull that back a little bit. When you go to high school here, around here, wherever, can you find pullbacks anymore? No. <laughs> you, you, you cannot find fullbacks anymore. So when you get players on campus, they could be, I mean, uh, they could be tight ends uh, that are on your campus now. They could be linebackers. Uh, they could be high school tailbacks that aren't quite fast enough that can get big enough, and they're willing to be the blocker instead of the ball carrier. You, you, have, to, you have to develop fullbacks. If you want to have a fullback, you have to pick them from some other position and develop them. And uh, our two fullbacks, one was a running back and one was a linebacker. And Nick Bodden was a quarterback. Now, that's, that's unusual that a quarterback becomes a fullback. That's very unusual. Well, I leave that up to Coach Horton, but I, I, uh, I know that the plan is that Christian's going to start. Ryan's going to come in for a series like Christian did. And I, I have great confidence that Coach Horton's going to put the quarterback back in there that's playing the best. Coach, could you talk about uh, Kahale and his impact on offense the past few weeks? Uh, Kahale, uh, I think, is still a little bit of a novice football player because he hadn't played very much. He gets a little bit better every week. He's actually uh, really improved his blocking. Uh, but he is an outstanding big athlete. He can, he's big. I don't know how big. He's big. 6'5", 255 or 60 pounds. He runs really fast, and he has great hands. And so he is a matchup problem for anybody. And then our offense has done a really good job with play action pass where sometimes he slips out there in the open and nobody covers him uh, and he catches the ball. So he has had a, a big, he is a big influence on any kind of offensive success that we have. You know, he had a touchdown pass last week that was called back. 
Now, he, uh, he actually dropped the pass. That's actually the first pass I've seen him drop in a game uh, that was on target that he should have caught. Uh, so he's got a lot of athletic ability and size and strength and speed, and he's becoming a better football player daily. Last week you were talking about some of the problems that young entrepreneurs were having this past Saturday here at Finkley in the fourth quarter, but you have a pretty nice position with this kind of return. What would you like to say about that? Well, I hope, I hope that we have found uh, somebody that solved our problems because that was a big issue, big issue with our team leading up to last week's game. And Bank did a great job of catching the ball, number one. We just wanted a guy out there that would catch the ball consistently, not let it roll down to the one-yard line or drop it. Well, he did that, and then he gave us a bonus by, I mean, he had about a nine-yard return on one, and then he had the long return. So he actually can run with the ball once he catches it if the guys out there work hard enough and block some people and give the guy a chance. I, I thought that was the biggest positive of our team last week was the improvement on catching punts and re being able to return a punt. I thought that was the biggest improvement we made. So hopefully that's a problem that is solved and we can work on the other problems that we have. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. So when I get home late on, later on tonight, hopefully there'll be a decision made one way or the other. I don't, I don't know. Sometimes you don't get it until the next day or a couple days later, right? Hopefully it'll be decided by tonight. Should we ask you how you voted? <laughs> uh, I would never tell you how I voted, but you can guess how I voted. <laughs> Only one of them makes sense. <laughs>